In this video, I will be showing you how to sew a safari suit. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time of watching my video, this is Reggie School of Fashion. In today's tutorial, I will be walking you through the process of constructing a safari suit, starting with a detailed introduction to the materials needed and also proceed in cutting out the fabric using the pattern we drafted out in my previous video. And in case you haven't seen my video on how to draft a safari suit, Kindly check the description area below for the link to the tutorial. More so, I will be starting a brand new series on the blazer suit tutorial soon. All for free. I know you guys are excited about this, right? All I need you guys to do is to go straight to the comment section and write blazer suit tutorial. So that I will be very sure you guys are ready for this as well. Consider subscribing to my channel for regular notifications and also give this video a thumbs up. With that being said, let's get down to the business of the day. These are the materials needed when constructing a safari suit. The first one is the patterns we drafted out in the previous video. We need the front and the back of the pattern. Okay, so here is the back pattern and here is the front pattern. Okay, so after getting your patterns ready, the next material is the main fabric we'll be using in constructing the safari suit. So as you can see, mine is here. So please, you need to take note of this. If you are making a complete safari suit, that is the lower part and the upper part, the jacket and the trousers, you will be needing nothing less than three and a half yards of fabric. It also depends on the size of the wearer. So this is going to be between three and a half and four yards. Okay, but if you want to make the upper part only, two yards, it's okay. So when you are making a safari suit, fabric like silk will not work for suit making. So you have to look out for a fabric that can work out for suit. So when you get to a fabric store, if you don't know the name of the fabric, just ask for fabrics that best that is best used for suit making. So after getting the fabric, you'll be needing a lining. Okay, so this is the lining I'll be using in constructing my safari suit. So this is called a suit lining. A suit lining can be with patterns or plain. Either of the two can be used. It all depends on your choice. If you want to use a pattern suit lining, you can use it. And if you want to use a plain, you can use a plain as well. So please take note of this. We have different types of lining, but there's a particular lining that works for suit making. So that is the suit lining. So when you are buying your lining, make sure you ask for suit lining. Okay, so the next material we'll be needing is the fusible interfacing. So here is my fusible interfacing. It is not necessary you make use of white, but because of this type of fusible interfacing, it only comes in white color. And because the lining is also going to cover this hop, so the color is not really the important thing. Okay, so we have different type of fusible interfacing as well. We have nylon fusible interfacing, that is the polythene, and we have cutting fusible interfacing it is popularly called fabric interfacing okay so this type i have here with me is the cutting fusible interfacing here is the wrong side you can see the wrong side is dull while the right side is shining so the shiny side is the glue side okay so apart from this we have an hair stay as well okay and we have paper one that is called paper stay but the best one for suit making is a fabric fusible interfacing that is the cutting one this is also a fabric okay so for this that is the fusible interfacing you need nothing less than one yard okay because it will be used only for the front side of the suit so one yard of this is okay and for the suit lining you need two yards 
of soot lining. So after the fusible interfacing, we'll be making use of wording. Okay, so wording has different sizes. That is the thickness. So this is the soft one. We have soft wording and we have thick wording. Then we have the one that is in between the soft and the thick one. The one I have here with me is the soft wording. Soft wording is what we'll be used in constructing our safari suits. So with this half of yard is okay, but if you want to use it for other projects as well, you can go for one yard. So then after the wording, we will be making use of another fusible interfacing. This is popularly called color stay. You can see the texture of this is different from the fabric one. You can see. So this is popularly used for color. It works perfectly for color. So this is popularly used for color. It works perfectly for color. When you get to fabric store, ask for color stay. That is the common name we call it a color stain okay this is also a fabric stain but this is thicker than this you can see this one is 100 percent cutting but this is not 100 percent cutting so that is the difference half yard of this is okay as well if you want to keep it for next project you can go for one yard in order to finish our safari suit, we'll be making use of these fancy buttons. You can see the buttons are looking good. Okay, so you need a very fancy buttons, not just ordinary buttons, because buttons is part of what will bring out the beauty of the safari suit. And this I have one dozen, that is 12 pieces. Okay, now it's time to cut out the fabric using the patterns we drafted in the previous video. In case you are yet to see that video, kindly check the description area below for the link to the tutorial. So I have the front and the back panels drafted here with the darts and the pockets. So guys, now I have my pattern pinned together with my fabric as you can see. Here is a back panel and here is the front panel if you remember when i was drafting this pattern i did not have any seam allowances as i told you all seam allowances will be added on the fabric so now it's time to add our seam allowances i will be adding a seam allowance on the shoulder line so this is what i'll be using in joining the front and the back panels together so i'll be needing half of an inch of seam allowance on the shoulder line also on the neckline area I will be adding half of an inch of seam allowance. So this is what I will be using in attaching the collar. Then on the arm O, I will be adding half of an inch of seam allowance. This is what I will be using in attaching the sleeve. Okay, then by the side of the pattern, I will be using one inch as seam allowance. That is joining the front and the back panels together. Then I will be needing extra one inch for joining the darts together this is because the darts i have on the back panel will be cut out when making a dart on a dress or suit you can either pick the dart or cut off the dart if you are cutting off the dart you have to add extra half of an inch on each panels in order to join that part together so and because i'll be needing half let's assume i cut this out i have one inch for the dart intake which has been added back to the side so there is no issue on that. I will just cut this off on the line. So I'll be connecting the dart to either the shoulder point or the ammo point. This is determined by the style I want to have at the back. Okay, so I'll cut out the dart. After cutting out the dart, I will have this part as one piece and I'll have this part as one piece. In order to join the two pieces together, I'll be needing half of an inch on this edge and I'll be needing half of an inch on this edge. All together, that is one inch. Then I need one inch for joining the front and the back sides together. So because of this, I will be adding two inches by the side of the back panel. Okay, so after adding two inches by the side, then at the center back, I will be adding half of an inch as seam allowance, which I will stop on the vent point. 
can you see what i have here so this is a vent point then for the remaining of the lower part of the suit which is the vent area i will not add any other seam allowance then why do i need to add extra half of an inch on the center back this is because the shape i have at the center back is not on a perfect straight line as you can see so after cutting this out the center back is going to be in pieces in order to join the center back the each panel together i will be needing extra half of an inch so that is the reason for that then for the lower part of our safari suit i will be adding one inch initially i needed half of an inch in order to finish this because we are adding a suit lining to our safari suit i need just half of an inch to attach the suit the fabric together with the lining but just to be on a safer side in case the fabric frayed out so i will not have a shortage of fabric at the lower part so that is why i will be adding one inch so which i can trim off when i'm ready to join it together okay so i will start with the lower part and i'll be adding one inch following the shape i have at the lower part So guys, I've added my seam allowances all around the pattern as you can see. So here is the back panel. As I said earlier, I will be adding allowance on the shoulder line, the neck line, the center back, the M line and the side of the seam, also the arm O. Now to the front panel. On the front panel, I added one inch by the side of the pattern. Why did I add one inch? This is because I will not be cutting off the dart I have on the front panel. I will be picking the dart and the dart allowance has been added when I was drafting the pattern. Okay, so then on the end line of the front panel, I added same one inch I added on the back. Okay, so then on the armhole, I added half of an inch, still the same with the back panel. On the shoulder line, half of an inch, still the same with the back panel. On the neckline area, half of an inch, still the same with the back panel. Then at the center front, I did not add any seam allowance. Why? This is because I already have a button allowance which I added when I was drafting the pattern. Okay, you can see from this head to this edge, I labeled this side as a button allowance. So this is 1.5 inches for button allowance. So out of this 1.5 inches, I will be using half of an inch to finish the edges, attaching this to the facing, and I'll be left with one inch for the button allowance. Now, before cutting out the fabric, let me give you guys this as a bonus okay after folding your fabric or before folding your fabric you have run a test on your fabric this also depends on the type of fabric you are using but whichever fabric you are using make sure you run this test before folding your fabric now on my fabric i have the side that is a little bit stretchy you can see what i'm having as i'm stretching it okay why this side is not stretchy at all so if you have the side that is stretchy make sure that side falls on the horizontal part of your pattern you can see the positioning of my pattern this is the side that is stretchy so the widest of my pattern falls on that side and the part that is not stretchy at all the length of the pattern falls on that side now i can proceed in cutting out my fabric now i'm done cutting out my fabric as you can see so the next step is to place notches on the appropriate places immediately after cutting out your fabric make sure you place your notches so this will help you when you are joining the front and the back panels together you will know where the chest level falls you will know where the waist level falls you will know where the 
that point falls you will know where the four inches extra we have on the back panel falls and you will know where the midpoint falls which is going to serve as the shoulder line in case you are lost with what i'm saying just watch the drafting part of this tutorial you will get to understand everything so i'll be placing notches on the appropriate places make sure you do this before removing your pattern this is very important and all the lines the horizontal lines i have on my pattern i've extended them on the fabric you can see what i have so that i will know the exact point to place my notches so now i'll be placing notches on the four inches point and on the center which is a two inches point so notching means cutting a little you don't need to cut much so that you don't cut out your seam allowance okay so you can see what i have so with this i will note this point So this is where the front panel is starting so this is going to serve as the shoulder line so this is a part i'll be folding over like so okay so here i have the chest line here is a line so i'll be placing notches on that point so with this i know where the seam allowance starts so i know what i have from here to here is the seam allowance then on the waistline i will be placing notches on that point as well so when i'm joining the front and the back i will make sure all the notches points so i'll make sure all the notches points meet before joining okay then here which is the vent allowance okay so here which is a vent allowance point i'll place notches on that point as well so with this i will know where the vent starts okay then on the other side of the center back so this is because i will have to join the center back together if your style does not require having your center back in pieces so please don't place notches at the center back but because i'm having this in pieces i'll be joining the two pieces together that's why i'm adding the notches Okay, I have that on the waist level, on the chest level. Then on this side as well, you can see the midpoint I have, which is going to be the shoulder line, where it falls on the other side. So here is a point. So I'll place notches on that point as well. Then the four inches point as well. So I will be placing notches on the point as well. So here on the shoulder line, I'm extending the point upward. So I'll place my notches here. Okay. Yeah, as well. so those are the most important areas I need to place my notches. I'm done placing notches on the back panel, so I'll be repeating the same process on the front panel. So I'll place notches on the M line, the waist line, the chest level, the shoulder line, the arm or the neck line. But on the center front, I don't need to place any notches. Thank you guys for watching this video to this point. I want to believe you've gotten values from today's tutorial. Let's meet in my next video where we will proceed to the next phase of this video series. Also, remember to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss subsequent episodes of this tutorial. Thanks once again and always do remember, there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. <laughs>